Let's talk about Nick Castellanos' struggles. <laughs> going on everybody welcome to philly sounds to media and today we're going to be talking about uh nick castellanos uh, you know really really struggling so far here in this 2022 season posting a 656 ops only eight home runs and our base percentage below the 300 mark uh so there certainly is a lot of time and a conversation for this video and i guess before i get into this video please subscribe if you haven't yet please don't get your bell please like this video comment on this video share this video and let's get into this so i talked about it last night that i was planning on making a nick castellanos video uh, sometime this week, and this is the day that worked perfect for me. Uh, so uh, go take a look at Nick Castellanos last year uh, with the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, you know, he did have an opt out after last season. That is why he became a free agent. 138 games, he hit 34 home runs, drove in 100 uh, runs, and uh, hit 309 with a 362 OBP, a 576 slugging percentage, and posted a 938 OPS. So going into this season, this guy certainly had high expectations. Uh, you know, going in the last all season, the Phillies honestly weren't really favored to sign him. Uh, actually, I predicted him to sign with the Chicago White Sox or a team like that. Uh, you know, San Diego Padres also rumored to be on this guy. So the Phillies weren't really connected too much to this guy. Uh, you know, a few Phillies fans were, you know, advocating for the Phillies to sign Nick Castellanos. And I said all season, stay away, stay away, stay away. Do not sign Nick Castellanos. He's going to be too expensive. Uh, I really don't think he'd fit our team that well. They have a, you know, big power bat like Bryce Harper, a guy that uh, not only does he hit home runs, but he, you know, you saw last year a guy who hit over 300. He's an on-base machine. Uh, he's all around as an elite player. Of course, he's the reigning NL MVP. Uh, so he must be pretty elite to win that award. He didn't really need another big bat like that. I understand that you know with the DH coming in nationally, that changed things a little bit. Uh, but uh, I, I I had my eyes on Kyle Schwarber, and uh, Kyle Schwarber has worked out so much more perfect uh, than Nick Castellanos. Yes, you know Kyle Schwarber certainly has his struggles with you know hitting for a low average and uh, you know not really being the best defender in the world. But honestly, uh, neither either one of these guys are a good defender, but this isn't a video as to why Kyle Schroer has been in Nick Castellanos, but I do think there are some stats that definitely play uh, into part here. Uh, so if you really want to know how bad uh, Nick Castellanos has been this season, I mean, a 246 batting average, certainly for a guy that's getting paid $25 million a year, certainly uh, very uh, lousy, that is for sure. Uh, but just forget about that 246 batting average. Let's say you round it up to around 250, I'll say. Uh, an OBP at 291. I mean, 291. That is just absolutely terrible. Uh, this is a guy that doesn't walk very much. And even last year, he had a great year. I mean, he had a great year last year. He only walked 41 times. 138 games. Even the 360 UOB, that's very good, but it's not like like elite. Like It's not like a Bryce Harper, Juan Soto. It's not anywhere near that level. Aaron Judge. I mean, it's, it's not. It's not. I mean, uh, you know, that's good, but it's not great. He doesn't really get on base that much, and that's that's one of the biggest drawbacks, even going back to last year. Uh, but uh, this is a guy that definitely shows a lot of emotion. He has an attitude. We've seen it already with the Jim Salisbury when he kind of got smart with him. Uh, and that was a stupid question. I'm not here to talk about that. Uh, but I mean, forget about the attitude for a second. This guy uh, has just been nothing short of a disaster. I mean, he was in a, he was in a hitter's park last year at Great American Ballpark. Uh, and as I talked about, he hit 34 home runs. He has only managed 800 home runs. His last home run, June 30th against the Atlanta Braves. His last home run prior to that was around Memorial Day. Uh, so literally over the last 60 days, two months basically, he's only hit one home run. One! One home run, uh, and uh, he very rarely ever hits out to right field. Uh, you know, he likes to pull the ball. He can't hit off-speed pitches. He can't hit anything on the outside part of the plate. Uh, there have just been so many things wrong with Nick Castellanos. Uh, you know, so many things wrong. As I'm talking about, also, uh, this is a guy that just does not get the job done running scoring system. I mean, you know, first and third yesterday. I forgot to talk about him yesterday in a recap last night. Uh, one out and he grinds into a double play. I mean, I mean, how in the world? I mean, you just have to end a sacrifice fly. Uh, I mean, all, that's all you have to do is get the ball in the air. Uh, so we go take a look. Only 23 walks this year through uh, 97 regular season games. I mean, think about that. 23 walks through almost 100 games. Uh, so that's just terrible. Uh, 99 strikeouts compared to his 121 strikeouts last year. Uh, so this is a guy that's always struck out a lot. I mean, it's been no streak and he always, always goes out of strikes. He's a power hitter. Uh, he's a power hitter. Uh, but I think the biggest thing of all, I mean, besides home runs, I think that's probably my biggest draw like Nick Castellanos, but a 6 56 OPS. Think about that. A 656 OPS, nearly 300 points lower than it was last year. Think about it. Nearly 300 points lower than it was last season. I mean, 300. That is so significant. I mean, wow. I mean, 300 points lower. And somebody brought this up. This is a good point. I mean, Mets talk with Hayden. 
on the phone with him last night. He made a good point. He said Nick Kostyanos is used to playing uh, in smaller markets like he was in Detroit. I mean, that's not really a huge market. Uh, you go take a look at, you know, brief time in Chicago. Of course, that is a pretty big market, but that was only half of a season. Uh, Cincinnati, as you know, not a very big market. Uh, now he comes to Philly, a big media market. Sports teams get a lot of attention. This is a sports town, uh, and uh, he just really hasn't bowled too well here. He just hasn't, and I think part of it is, you know, somebody brought this up. Uh, you know, partly it's just because the whole plan was to have him, you know, platoon DH in left field with Kyle Schwarber. Uh, and for obvious reasons, that did not happen with Harper tearing his UCL. Uh, so he's been uh, playing right field basically since like the first few weeks of season. So that's uh, definitely been, you know, factor playing in. But honestly, I mean, that's not really much of an excuse on the outfield every day for the Cincinnati Reds last year because uh, there was no DH last year. Uh, so, and also, I think the weird thing is he did get off to a pretty good start, right? I mean, in the month of April, he had a, he had a great month of April. He had a great month of April. April uh, and, and you know through 22 games uh, the guy hit 300 a 374 on base percentage uh, a 475 slugging percentage and he posted an 849 OPS so through the first month of the season this guy was great I pretty much looked like up right where he was last year and then in May at 234 uh, June 223 and here in July 238 um, so uh, he has just been absolutely terrible. Doesn't even hit the baseball that hard. I mean, that, that's another thing. I mean, now is he not slugging? How is he not, you know, really hitting any home runs? Of course, only at eight. Uh, but um, he only has like 21 doubles on the year. I'm surprised it's even that high, to be honest with you. Uh, so he's never really been a good defender. I'm not really going to talk too much about the defense here. Uh, he doesn't have good range. I mean, balls that Harper would track down, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't have very good range. He just doesn't have a lot of awareness out there. Uh, but he wasn't brought aboard because of his defense. Uh, but I can make a whole long, long video as to why Dave Gabrowski should have just signed one of Kyle Schwarber and Nick Castellanos. He definitely was on the board all, se all of season long. Kyle Schwarber is the better fit for this team, and he's proven to be the better fit for this team. Uh, so it, 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 this seems like Nick Castellanos hasn't fit in here very well. He doesn't really seem like he really loves it here. Uh, and uh, it just, it just, it's, I don't know. It, it just, I just get the vibe there. And also, I mean, the way he's played. Uh, he just doesn't look comfortable up there at the plate. Uh, he, he has been in a rut for, for a long time now, and Rob Thompson continues to bat him up in the lineup. I mean, for a while he was hitting third, and finally he you know moved him back uh, to fifth. But even fifth, I mean, he needs to be batting uh, seventh or eighth. This guy needs to be batting way down the lineup. You cannot be having him bat that far up in the lineup. Uh, so I, you know, I'm still waiting for that. Uh, but you're going to go take a look. Kyle Schwarber, just to you know, give you some comparison. I mean, uh, you know, Kyle Schwarber hitting 201 with 800 OPS. And yes, I understand this is because, because he walks the line and he has hit 31 home runs. That's why the OPS is so high. But, I mean, Nick Goss, you know, 656. I mean, I mean, 656. I mean, I mean, that is just absolutely dreadful. Absolutely dreadful for a guy that's getting paid $25 million a year. $25 million a year. You go take a look how bad it is. Didi Gregorius last year, we all know how bad Didi Gregorius was last year, posted a 640 OPS. A 640 OPS. Uh, so that is 16 points lower. Just 16 points lower than what Nick Cassiano's OPS is this year. I mean, think about that. I mean, think about that. Dini Gregorius uh, in 103 regular season games last year, more than what Nick Cassianos has played this season, has an OPS just 16 points lower than Nick Cassianos does this year. Think about it. I mean, that is just horrendous. To put things in perspective for you. I mean, that is just absolutely horrendous. Uh, and uh, I'll be honest with you, I mean, it seems like if he does, you know, occasionally get a hit, it's only a single. I mean, he's basically just practically been a singles hitter, and that's the only reason why the average is as high as it is, right around 250. Uh, so he's just been hitting singles. Uh, he hasn't, he, of course, the home runs haven't been there, obviously, as I've said like a million times in this video, uh, and he only has 21 doubles. But I do think that Nick Castellanos will, you know, finally turn around. I mean, for whatever reason, I mean, uh, you don't know what's going on in his personal life, uh, but uh, we all know he's a much, much better player than this, and uh, for some reason it's taken a while to adjust, but the weird part is, as I talked about, a great, great month of April. He posted almost uh, an 850 OPS with the 300 average. Uh, he was getting on base and OPP near 400. Uh, so whatever reason, he was just absolutely wonderful in the month of April, and then he just fell apart. Uh, I remember I remember when it was happening, I'm like, wow, Nick Castellanos by far, uh, you know, going into May, probably the most consistent Philly I've seen. Uh, and uh, look where he is right now. As I talked about before, I mean, I advocated all season, stay away from Nick Castellanos, stay away from Nick Castellanos. There he's like, oh no, you know, he's going to be a great fit here. Uh, now, when he signed with the Phils, uh, of course I was excited. I mean, look at the year he had last year. I mean, look at the year he had last year. You know, above a 900 OPS, 34 home runs, 100 RBI, you know, a 309 average. Uh, so what, am I going to be upset that we signed a guy like that? I just wasn't average advocating for the Phils to sign him. I said stay away. I didn't really think he'd be a good fit here. Uh, but now we got him like, hey, you know, I, I, you know I, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, he's a great player. 
Uh, but uh, I know he's a much better player than this. I know he will snap out of this. I know that he will find his group. And also, he's dealing with a new hitting coach, a whole new coaching staff. You know, with Kevin Long, you don't know what the kind of chemistry they have. Uh, but uh, you know, there's something off with Nick Castellanos. I mean, there's something off with this guy right now. Uh, and uh, you know, as I've mentioned before, can't hit outside pitches, can't really hit on any off-speed pitches for that matter. Um, and uh, they're just going to keep throwing it. That's why they keep going there because they know that he just can't hit it. And it, until he can prove he can hit it, they're just going to keep going there. Can you blame him? Uh, no, you cannot. Uh, no, you cannot. Uh, so I firmly believe that he will snap out of this. I mean, he's still going to have a really bad season. Well, season. He still has two months, a little over two months to maybe make it not look as bad. Uh, hopefully he could get around, you know, 15 to 16 home runs. That's what I'm hoping for. Just double his total of what he has right now. Uh, I don't even care about the batting average. I, I don't even care about the batting average. I'm not even going to say, oh, if he could hit 260, 270. Who cares? I just want that OPS higher. I want that OPS around 750. That is doable. That is certainly doable. This is certainly a guy that can get on the run. But I remember, you know, going through, uh, you know, May and early June, you know, we're thinking like, oh, my gosh, this guy, he's been absolutely terrible with the home runs. And we're thinking like, hey, I mean, once the weather starts heating up, it starts getting humid out. The ball's going to be flying out of the ballpark. He's going to be getting on a run. And we just haven't seen that yet. We just haven't seen it. Yet. It's almost August 1st. We still have yet to see it. Uh, so I'm waiting. I am waiting for this guy to get it going. Uh, so I'm extremely disappointed with Nick Castellanos. Do I, you know, heavily dislike this guy? No. Of course I hope he does well. I mean, what do you think? We think I want him to fail? Uh, of course not. We're playing a bad team here for four games in Pittsburgh, so hopefully he can maybe get his swing back a little bit, but uh, this guy needs to get it going. Uh, so hope you all enjoyed this video. Nick Castellanos breaking down his struggles. Uh, breaking down his struggles. I think the you know the biggest of all, the only eight home runs at the 656 OPS is the most like befuddling part to me. So guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please don't forget your bell. Please like this video. Comment on this video. Share this video. Check out the social media link in the description section at Philly's Asso Media, Instagram, Instagram, follow me on Twitter at Piazzo Media, card text 267-225-592. Email me, Philly's Media at gmail.com. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Luke and I'll talk to you. Let's go Phil. So see you guys.